Hey guys, how you doing today? So we have a special mission this morning. Let me show you something right here. This postcard, this awesome postcard, is from Mexico. And I have a dear friend in Mexico who has been begging, yes, begging, for me to send her a postcard from Poland. And I have delayed this for months now. So today we're gonna head out into the busy tourist mecca that is Krakow and find a decent postcard. So join me and let's see what we can find. We are taking the most direct route to Stara Miesta. This is St. Joseph's Church right here. I highly recommend you pay to visit sometime. It's gorgeous inside. It's a basilica, very, very pretty. So what we're doing is we're gonna, the plan at least, my plan, is I'm gonna try to take us, show you some scenic spots on this walk but at the same time, uh, avoid as many people as humanly possible, which might sound a little bit uh, counterproductive when you're in a major city, but let me tell you, depending on the time of day, it gets hectic here, and uh, a little bit much, if you ask me. So, it's only 10 o'clock in the morning. Left early enough that stuff should still be, uh, the shops sh should be open, but also, um, Crowds won't be that bad yet. Let's look behind me, there's the church. This is kind of a funny spot. I usually actually make fun of it because people will come to this uh, square right here and they'll just stand here. They won't go into the church, just like what we just did actually, and they'll just pose for their selfies. Um, I will go in, but I'm wearing shorts. I wanna be respectful. <laughs> so not gonna happen for today. I don't know if you can see it right there behind me, but there's a deer that they put on the side of the building. It's pretty cool. This little spot in Pugusia is, uh, have a lot of decent restaurants. And uh, it's at the foot of the uh, Bridge of Locks, which we're gonna go cut, we're gonna go walk over to. I've seen several walking tours. Actually, before I moved to Krakow, for me to get an idea of my neighborhood, I watched a walking video. It didn't talk at all. It was a true walking video <laughs> where you would see uh, what this area looked like uh, primarily in the early evening summer. And we're in June now as I film this. And uh, certainly things are a little bit different now than they were for me back in the winter season. Now, this bridge, the Bridge of Locks, actually has two different sides. One's meant for bikers, and the other one is meant for walkers or for people that just want to pose for pictures. You'll note down here, here's the Vistula, or the Vizwa, and they already have some of the boats are out, the taxiing boats for the tourists that are here. Um, a little bit of information, if you look at the, that boat right here called the Augusta, uh, it's interesting because that's where home is for me, it's Augusta, Augusta, Maine, but uh, that Augusta next to it is a party boat that you really wouldn't be able to tell from here. But let me assure you, it definitely is. Uh, the other morning on Corpus Christi, which is like this huge religious holiday, it's a Catholic religious day here in Poland. So it was Thursday morning and I went out for a run. I, I was out on this river walk at 4.30 in the morning and part of my French, but those bastards were cranking the music. It was booming. It was a disco basically uh, all along the river, but just from this one boat. Um, there were a bunch of drunk people and uh, not only college students, just for the tourists that were here, just living it up. And I found it really hypocritical, to be honest, that it's like, or actually, I shouldn't even say that it was hypocritical. It's just, this is Poland, uh, in the sense that they're a very religious country, but then on the other hand, they, could, they, I don't know, they, is, is duplicitous the word that I'm looking for? Um, I don't even know how to like explain it. It's just, 
I would have expected from such a religious place the fact that they had this holiday and then things were shut down yesterday as well that perhaps they wouldn't have had anything like that going but as I was running along the river for like a half a mile away I could still hear the music it just kind of baffled me that's all but then again a lot of stuff here over this school year has baffled me uh, I'll talk about it some other time because trust me there's a there's a <laughs> there's a gluttony of stuff like even this morning huh just a little snippet here this morning when I went to the grocery store like uh, I'm waiting in line behind one other person and then there's a guy behind me and um, what was so Polish is the guy behind me literally was maybe two inches from me he was like he was like riding me uh, and even as I put my stuff up and it was like he crept even closer as though he was ready to put his stuff on top of my stuff as I was trying to uh, get everything you know processed by the uh, by the lady who was working the uh, the, the register just it's just a weird dynamic in some regards I'm not used to like the people walking down the streets uh, with their open containers drinking their beer at 430 in the morning um, now this is kind of a funny place right here so this spot last summer when I was here this actually was a burger place and now it's nothing it's the peace wall is what we'll call it. The peace wall. This is very, it is a lovely day today. I'm quite happy that I actually got out because originally it was supposed to pour. Still supposed to pour. But uh, hopefully we can kind of thread the needle, if you will. And I'll show you the old, the old square before uh, the heavens open up. As we cut down the side street, we're going past this church right here, and look, it's open. So let's just sneak in. We'll take a little, we'll take a quick little look, and you can get get an idea for what to expect when you come to visit. ceilings all painted and not to be forgotten here's a replica of Our Lady of uh, Chestahova the Black Madonna I think and then uh, Pope John Paul II who's now Saint John Paul <laughs> I was just going to say uh, I've only been in that church a few times and every time that I go in it I for, I'm reminded how like lovely it truly is. And uh, I think that's one of the things that I do appreciate about Krakow and Poland in general is the wealth of, of how do I phrase it? I, I really appreciate the inside of the churches and the decorum. And it's interesting because there's such a contrast from some of the churches that have been here for hundreds of years and then like the newer ones if you go to uh, the Basilica over at uh, Holy Mercy I think that's what it is um, that was only built in 2002 uh, and but yet three popes have been there uh, it uh, has a completely different vibe than that church but then again if you're into just churches in general there's over like 110 just Catholic churches here in Krakow. So, and I know we're supposed to be focusing on Miss, my, my dear Mexican friend's uh, postcard, but you know, when you go for a walk, you got to point out all the cool stuff. I'm in this uh, square in Cajimeras right now, uh, where we kind of walk by, but this is my favorite square in the area. And this church back here is another basilica. It's, it's beautiful. They also have a sign that says you can't go in if you have shorts on. 
the other place I didn't see one. <laughs> so you see how we did that? That's right. Um, now, if you cut over that way, you can go to like some of the more famous um, old Jewish sections of town uh, for their market and uh, a lot of synagogues and stuff like that. It's actually very, very nice to go visit and tour. Now, one thing, even right now as we walk around, it's interesting. You can clearly tell who the tourists are uh, as they stop and read the maps or really, well, you can just tell by their clothes too. It's funny, I was just um, trying to cut down a side street that I want to show you guys, but I noticed in front of me three of my coworkers. And I'll tell you this, this is only the second time the entire school year that I have run in to anyone in the city on the weekend. So I tactfully have turned around. <laughs> I know that sounds really antisocial, but truth is, you know, we have a mission. Uh, plus, I can show you this real quick. So in the background, this one we can't go in because of shorts. Um, this is uh, St. Rita in the background right over here. And uh, again, note how close all these churches are. But when I was first here, um, I wanted to explore and kind of just walk around and get a feel for things. So what I did is uh, I didn't even look at the forecast and it started raining, just pouring hard. And I was on this street and I managed to slide in to St. Rita. And if you know anything about St. Rita, you know she's for hopeless causes. <laughs> so uh, I'm inside there and then literally the sky's just completely completely just a downpour for about 10 minutes but uh, then it stopped and thankfully for Miss Rita I uh, was not wet and then I carried on and uh, got to explore more of town so I always think of uh, that church in a in a positive way now you might be like hey John why'd you stop well this is why there's a, uh, where are we? Right here. See this guy coming in right here? They don't stop. Which would make sense, but for us uh, non-city folk, you might think, oh, oh, they're going to stop for you. No, they don't. Note how I'm also walking a little bit gingerly as we cut right here. Yeah. For the first time, I'm thinking since September, because I've been wandering, well, I've been wandering the streets since August, actually. I have never seen a, a person sleeping outside, like a homeless person. But uh, I've managed to see several for today, and I don't know if that's because it's the warmer weather or what. Um, I will say, and I'll share this with you guys, for anyone who comes to visit this area, in the colder weather months, especially along the river walk, in the early morning hours, it's really quiet. But once uh, the warmer weather hits, uh, I mean, this is like 5.30 in the morning. There's people that are out doing their thing. And when I say doing their thing, I mean they're having their adult beverages. They're frolicking. A bunch of drunk people on the uh, benches. Uh, I, I've, I've actually seen more drunks in the last week than I probably have the entire um, year that I've been here. Now, where we are right now, we're right outside the uh, beginning of where Wobble, Wobble Castle is. But it's also, right next to it, is home of the Krakow Pinball Museum, which uh, you can pay by the hour. It's like, I don't know, it's not that expensive. It's like, I don't want to make up a price, but it's really not inexpensive to go down and play a uh, variety of pinball games and some vintage arcade as well. There's also another arcade here in Krakow as well, which I think has a bigger selection. I haven't been to either of them, but I'm aware of them. Because uh, as I said, I kind of, well, maybe I didn't say it directly, but I typically avoid these touristy spots. And you'll see why momentarily. Look at this cute little elephant. Can you see him? Aww. I want to bring him home. I might. 
might go into the Indian restaurant and say, hey guys, can I, um, can you just give me the elephant, please? You have Wobble Castle right there. Built or founded by King, King Krakus after he killed the dragon. Got these beautiful flowers right here. And then down here is a wonderful, exquisite church. Um, I want to say it's Baroque, but then I'm just throwing out random words to make myself sound intelligent when I really I don't know. But uh, look at all the statues. Now, here. I know. I wasn't trying to turn, turn this into a church tour today, but the door is open. I'll just show you this. See the clothing? Yeah. So we're going to be respectful. I will just show you this from a corner. You know, I think that's the first time that I've been in there, or at least stepped in enough to film any of it. Uh, it was just, I was more like enamored with the outside before, but I think it's because, you know, I saw the uh, sign about shorts and just was like, eh, maybe not. Now, here's a part of Krakow that I hate. These little tourist buggies, we'll call them. These golf carts. They are... I have some very choice words for it, but I won't use them. It's just, in a nutshell, I think it's great. It brings money to the city. But some of these tour groups, they just, they literally just do these drive-bys. So you're really not getting a feel for everything. Now, maybe if that's what people want, great. But, I don't know. It bothers me. Clearly. So we're on the back side of the castle. What we're going to do is we're just going to cut right here next to this giant cross that is about Mugatan, which if you're not familiar, uh, happened in 1940 when uh, the Germans and the Soviet Union had made their agreement and the Soviet Union swallowed up their part of, part of Poland. Uh, the Soviet military... Um, they ended up um, capturing a bunch of Polish uh, military, primarily the officers and the intelligentsia, and they murdered them in the woods in different parts uh, out towards the eastern border. Uh, oh, we could have gone there for a postcard but I have a specific place in mind. Um, <laughs> so this is the Universal Studios part of Krakow, this street right here. Uh, <laughs> but uh, instead of dwelling on that, um, just going back to the Bhutan thing. Uh, there's a museum in Belostuk up near the Belarusian border and they speak about not only that circumstance but the history of Polish those of Polish descent look how cute this little sheep is going to um, being sent off to Siberia and how it's more than just going to Siberia it's also representative of being sent away in mind away from all that you know and from take being taken away from your identity so and on a side note part of the situation in Ukraine right now with the Russians and the Ukrainians uh, with Russia taking away the children and some of the citizens and then literally shipping them off to to Siberia. It's like it's just, just repeating the same pattern, which is why it's so important to study your history and to be more, I would say, take a closer look at what you're actually reading and make sure that you are discerning the correct information. Now this is a beautiful church too right here. Um, 
they do a lot of uh, musical performances in here because the acoustics are really nice. You'll note a tour group right here on bikes, lucky them. Uh, I usually cut in that way on the side street because it's quiet, but just for you guys for today, we're going forward. You know what's funny? I don't have a crack out magnet. Oh my god, I see some cappy bar right here. I see some plushies, some... I really don't want to get this uh, postcard right now. I kind of want to get a new friend. All right, focus, John, focus. You can do this, you can do this. One of the highlights of being in Krakow, I think, is taking a carriage ride with the horses. Uh, I did it on Christmas Eve. Or was it Christmas Day? I don't know, it was one or the other. And let me just tell you, it was a little bit costly. I mean, granted, uh, you know, as a single guy, even more so, if I had had a couple people with me, I could have rationalized it. I think it worked out for like a 10 minute ride, it was like 60 bucks. Something absurd. Even though I am not a city guy, I love the smell of food. Like we have a combination of like a pizza place, a kebab place, some souvenir shops. Speaking of souvenir shops, look at this one. Now, first of all, if it's raining, this is a place to protect you from it. But look at this. Look at these. Look at this little family. This little family of dragons that need to come home. And more importantly, look at the geese. These big geese that also need homes. Would you buy them if you were here? Tell me, would you? <laughs> so for people that are watching this, I'm curious. Please feel free to put it into the comments. Like, how many people have been to Krakow? And how many people are planning to come to Krakow? And is there a place that you, like, prefer more than others? I know in the beginning for me, it seemed like every weekend, maybe on Sundays, until I started, like, traveling places, I definitely was going for walks here, uh, which I think is why I got burnt out of walking here because of the number of people. But in a way, it kind of, as I said in the beginning a few minutes ago, it brings me back to like Universal. And sometimes it's cool to walk among the crowds. Now, look at this. This is classic. Is that Spud McKenzie right here? Right here? Is that Spud? I think it is. One thing that you'll note, maybe not yet because they're sleeping, but soon, if you end up walking around the side streets connected to this old square, there's always people that are out with flyers trying to get you, for example, to get a ride on the horses or to go on one of those um, golf cart tourist rides that I had alluded to. Or, if you're into it, more of those like adult oriented places. Um, I just keep walking. But uh, I'll say, it's interesting being here in the summer. Because in the winter months, it just has a completely different vibe with their Christmas markets. But you still get a nice feel. You get all your restaurants that are here on the side. Your big center market square that's been around since like 1300s or something like that but note how like people don't even pay attention so if you're not on your toes moving around it can be kind of a pain like this biker right here didn't even come on guy so these cyclists right here like they don't give a shit they just cut across doing whatever they want So, here's a better vantage point before I'll take you into the actual market because uh, I could get postcards there, but we're not going to. But see, right here is the famous uh, church, which I forget the name of it. I always forget the name of it, and then I walk away, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what it was called. But uh, it's a church. You can pay a small fee. Go up to the top is what my understanding is. Uh, there's a bell tower over here. And again, this is the center market where they still actually trade quite a bit of things. I call it the tourist trap. But, uh, and then they have different restaurants and outdoor seating surrounding this entire square. And it's a very cool spot. 
I think to visit once. If I were, you know, th there's much more to Poland than Krakow. I'll be the first to tell you that. But here, let me show you this market. This guy right here is trying to pawn stuff. If you like chess sets, here's some cool chess sets. Nice, beautiful amber jewelry. Some religious icon stuff. Traditional clothing right here. I know I'm walking too fast, so you're not really going to get an idea. But we'll just keep walking and you can just pretend that you get a good idea. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, it's a mall. It's sort of like a mall, is how I would equate it. And of course, there's only one cool thing in this spot. If you really want to get something nice, here's what you buy, right here. Come on, my Stark fans. Or one of these giant geese. I'll give you the real sights here of Krakow with the McDonald's sign in front of us. And how Americana has spread. And... <laughs> Another vantage point of the um, bell tower. And then there's a head, a Roman head that has over there. I still don't understand the whole purpose of it, aside from letting kids just play around a head. You guys are getting quite a tour. More, more than I expected for this little trip to go get, a, go get a postcard of all things. So, do you want my honest opinion, though? Not that I'm holding back at all. If I was new in coming to this area, I'd only spend, I'd spend a day at most in Krakow. I'd use it as my base of operations and I would just take trains pretty much like everywhere. It just makes more sense and it's more, uh, and that way you're getting a real sense of Poland. It's not the touristy, uh, aspects like even up here so like they have a sign for the concentration camps and for the Valitska salt mine there's another salt mine farther away that's better than the Valitska one the Valitska one is the one that's known because of the um, its proximity to Krakow but uh, I forget the name of the town I think it starts with a B but if you hop on the train and you head towards the east, uh, I know I'm narrowing it down. It's really not that far though. Um, you go to this specific mine and what's cool about it is it has a water crossing. You can get on a boat and actually go through the tunnels, um, which you can't do at the Vlitska one. And it still is salt. It still has all that fun stuff. Look at this right here. My Aunt Judy would be so happy right now. Here's the Amber Museum as I take a, as I inhale the cigarettes, right here. I don't know if it's probably not gonna come in that well, but there's an amber, there's a crab. My Aunt Gail would be even happier. An amber crab. It's like the combination of cool things. I don't know if you can see, see it in front of me, but there's a slew of people with their, um, their bags rolling them up the street. That's what happens now coming and going. It's a cute little spot right here. Little cafe action. And then again, just as I said, there's all these churches. I don't think I've been in this one. Yeah, I haven't been inside that church because it's locked. That's usually what happens. More often than not, if you end up watching more of these vlogs and you see us go into churches, it's, go it's a complete hit or miss. No. On my previous channel, it was it literally was a 50-50 thing. But uh, maybe we'll have more luck. New channel, new luck. Now, my first time exploring Krakow, because I hadn't been to Krakow when I, when I moved here. I've, I was only in Gdansk and in Warszawa. But uh, right here is an Irish pub. Let me tell you a story about this Irish pub. So I walked in there, okay, and I asked the uh, waitress where could I sit? She's like, wherever you want. And then I just sat down. And guess what? 15 minutes later, nothing. Waitress was on her phone. The, sorry, the bartender waitress. There was no one else in the place. And she was just looked down on her phone the entire time. 
Now, in hindsight, it could have been that this pub, you actually go up and you order your drink from the bar, but since I clearly look American, don't speak Polish, and she probably picked that up immediately when I walked in, there was no motivation on her part to say, hey, um, if you want something to drink, you got to tell me. So anyway, I just sat there, and then I got to the point where I was like, screw this, and I got up, and I left. <laughs> so that was my first experience here, eating in Krakow. And then I did something more American than, any, than anything else. I came up to the transfiguration of uh, Christ Church right here, hung a left or a right, and I ended up going to McDonald's for the best McChicken I've ever had. That's right. Amen. <laughs> this part of town reminds me a little bit, or I should say Castle Black reminds me a little bit of this with the uh, walkway up there, but not all the art pieces, clearly. And I don't know what this is, but is this a rat? Like truly, does that sell food to you? I wonder if they serve cheese. That's what I wonder. <laughs> now, I would love to show you more of those art pieces over there, more than what I showed you, but eh, there's some uh, provocative ones that, you know, don't need people getting excited about. So there's the McDonald's I ate at. I know, I'm showing you the most important landmarks. This is Charles Gate right here. I think it's Charles Gate. And if you take it and go through that, it's a short walk to... Uh, the train station. We are uh, almost to where I wanted to be. Uh, this street, not only does it have my McDonald's, but it has a tourist shop. I think it's just I Love Krakow is what it's called. So we're going to go in there. I mean, clearly there were some other places we could have hit, but between that and uh, there's actually this beautiful um, stuffed animal store right near it as well. But if you're into real stuffed animals, I mean, no offense to the uh, geese we saw earlier, but there's some pretty cool, like, I think it's Swedish um, made cats and rabbits and all this other stuff. And look, we have arrived at I Love Krakow. So the question is, can we find the postcard we want here? Will my friend be happy? And really the more complicated thing is, as we go in here, is will it be a good one, a suitable one? I always feel like when I come into these places that I'm like not getting a good deal. I mean, it's interesting though. I do feel like as someone from New Hampshire and Maine, New England, you know, this is the type of place where I definitely would buy some of their clothes just so that I can wear it around when I'm here in town, because that's what we do. Stockings over there. All right. So we have two sets of uh, postcards here. We have our traditional ones right here. It's a two for, uh, two for sale. And then we have these nice ones, but I think these are actually, oh no, cool, we have some nicer ones. So give me a second, I'll show you what I get. Well, that was a giant pain in my backside. Uh, I did find some postcards. I'm going to show it to you momentarily. We just need to find a quiet spot that I can sit down and not feel like I'm going to be attacked. Not that I was being attacked in there, but it was a little bit obnoxious. Um, like there was no sense of where the actual line was to get to the register. And uh, I got cut off by like four different people. And then um, it was weird though. I haven't seen this. There was a tip jar like right at the cashier. I'm like, no one helped me. This isn't a food service place. Why are you guys collecting tips? I mean, clearly it works because there were several um, tens shoved into the uh, jar. Unless they put in the ten to then make people feel like, oh, we should tip too. I don't know. I haven't seen that before. So that's definitely, yeah, different. Uh, one thing to add, if you are exploring like the Stare Miesta part of town, 
you will find as the farther away you are from the actual center square from the Rhinac itself the streets can be pretty quiet so where that where the I love Krakow store was that was um, literally from the Charles Gate directly in so it's always crowded well aside from at 3.30 in the morning so there is a square that I like that's right over here it literally is one square over it's very um, cathartic that's the word I'm looking for so that's where I'm going to go check out one other tip if for my more introverted tourists if uh, you still want to get a feel for this area but not be so overwhelmed and just kind of like dip your feet in the old moat which surrounds I mean clearly surrounds the entire Star Miesta is green you can see it behind me and it's got benches everywhere and it's a great place to just take a breather because most people just avoid it I mean certainly there's people that are walking and strolling and you do get the occasional drunk who is asleep on a bench but just saying it's not it's not too bad now this is my square this is my quiet square that I go to which just so happens um, King Charles the third is here I I don't know why that is hello your majesty yes I know I'm an American who is a uh, clearly still has his allegiance to uh, the British monarchy right <laughs> so let me show you this now there is another square on the other side of Rhinek, which is equally, I think, um, nice. But I like the sound of the water. So let me show you these postcards now. You guys have waited so long. Let's see what I have chosen and what I have to actually mail. That is the real adventure, folks. Drum roll, please. Take these out. Now, uh, Miss Mariana, if you are seeing this, uh, at least you have proof that I got them. If they don't get to you, at least you have an idea. So we have this first one. Look at this beautiful watermark. This is the Royal Castle at Wobble Hill. It's the first one. And uh, I won't tell you the price. Oh, they're about 50 cents each. <laughs> and then the one I chose because I love the pigeons here. This is uh, the Cloth Hall in Krakow, where we just walked through. So my next task is clearly I'm gonna have to mail these. I can't mail them on a Saturday. God forbid the post office was open for today. It's not. I'm scared, to be honest. I've had some uh, problems with the post office here when I first arrived, so much so that I stopped doing anything post office related back in September. But for my dear friend, don't you worry. I'll pencil up the Gusto. I'll, I don't know, I'll figure out a way to go over to the post office and buy a stamp. Hopefully they, they don't yell at me and it will get to you in four to five months. We'll see. And as for the viewers, hey guys, uh, thanks for coming along. Thanks for letting me show you a little bit of Krakow. I figured you might want to take a look while we were out for this walk. And uh, it is a nice city to visit um, on your way to other more natural things here in Poland. So, uh, all right, guys. Till next time. Peace.